Hi, I'm Nick Schott at Deal Mock Kayaks. Welcome to the 10th episode of my series on building the petrol play. In the last episode, I glassed the hull. In this episode, I'll glass the deck. But before doing that, I need to do a final sanding. And when it's complete, I'll give it a heavy fill coat. After the epoxy is cured on the hull, it's a bit stuck to the forms. I worked around the perimeter, pulling the shell of the boat away from the forms. The fiberglass has already added a lot of strength, and the hull can flex quite a bit without breaking. With just one layer of glass in the hull, it weighs almost nothing and it's easy to lift off the forms. Before glassing the hull, I temporarily removed the deck and placed it aside so epoxy would not drip on it. Now that the hull has one layer of glass, I flip the forms back over and put the deck back in place. A little hot melt glue secures the deck to the forms and holds it in shape. Back in episode 7, I did an initial sanding on the deck, and in episode 8, I installed the recess. Now I need to clean up the transition into the recess and do finish sanding. The long board levels out any slight waves in the surface that may have been created by the random orbital sander. It also removes any cross grain scratches the power sander made. I then go over the whole surface again with 120 grit sandpaper using a random orbital with a small orbit for a finer finish. The soft contour adapter pad between the sanding disc and the power sander helps conform to the surface. I use the same back and forth followed by up and down sanding pattern that I described in episode 7. Moving slowly, overlapping about 50% each pass while working in two different directions assures that the whole surface gets sanded evenly. It's inevitable that with all the sanding that some of the stain on the cockpit recess is removed. To fix it, I start by masking off the areas I don't want any stain. In this case, there's the fine pin stripe between the recess and the deck that needs to be covered. I apply another coat of stain to the spots that need it and then wipe the whole surface down with alcohol to blend the colors together. The masking tape can come off immediately. As soon as the stain is dry, I roll out the fiberglass cloth. It would be best if I had some help and could hold up the cloth off the boat while I roll it out, but I work alone, so it's easiest to support the roll on the boat. Since this is a narrow roll of cloth, I just cut it off to length. I could save some material by laying the cloth on a slight diagonal and then nest the next cut in beside the end, but again, working alone, this is easier. The recessed combing is a little difficult for the glass to conform to. By making some cuts in the cockpit area, I can relieve most of the tension in the arms that might prevent a smooth fit. I always want to start applying the epoxy resin where the cloth will have the hardest time conforming to the surface. Dry cloth can be fairly easily distorted to drape smoothly. Once it's wet with epoxy, it's harder to warp the weave around complex shapes. I dab the brush onto the surface to push the cloth down into the contours while transferring resin onto the layup. 
Wiping the brush at this point would pull tension into the yarns and possibly cause them to lift up off the recessed area. I'm not trying to get the cloth wholly wet out with the brush. I'm really just using the brush to get some resin from the mixing bucket onto the boat and start to stick the cloth where I want it. Once the epoxy is out of the bucket and onto the boat, I use my squeegee to distribute that resin around. Once I've completely wet out around the cockpit area, right down to the shear, I'm ready to move on. I can just pour out a puddle of resin and use my squeegee to move that epoxy around. I work the squeegee from wet towards dry. In this way I pull the cloth tight and transport any wrinkles out towards the dry cloth or even better, off the edge of the boat. With the tip of the squeegee I grab enough resin to fill where I'm working. Holding it at a low 20 degree angle with light pressure, I pull the puddle along, allowing it to soak into the fabric as I go. To move resin farther distances over saturated cloth, I'll increase the angle up to 45 to hold the resin as I plow, until I get to a dry spot where I'll lower the angle to help push it into the weave. In this initial wet out I like to leave everything a bit oversaturated where I can see some shiny puddles. This allows the wood to sponge up extra resin and reduces the chances of starved spots later. Since it was quick about getting the initial wet out complete, I have plenty of time to come back and do the grunge cup. Holding the squeegee at about a 45 degree angle with a sharp edge down and moderate pressure, I press the cloth down and pull off the excess resin to be disposed of by dragging the edge through a slot in the paper cup. Once I've cleared up all the drips and the cloth has a uniform matte finish with the weave texture clearly showing, I let it cure for several hours until the resin is set up enough to hold the cloth firmly to the deck but still soft enough to promote a full chemical bond. Then I apply a fill coat. Unlike the previous episode with the hull, where I applied a light coat in preparation for another layer of cloth, on the deck I want to start towards the final smooth, shiny finish. This implies a fairly heavy fill coat. The 
key to applying a lot of resin quickly without making a drippy, saggy mess is creating a uniform film thickness. To achieve this, I work systematically on small areas at a time. Since I use staples when installing the strips, I have a series of one-foot sections to find. Dipping the brush deeply into my mixing pot, I pull out a fully laden brush. This epoxy is spread onto the surface with firm horizontal strokes back and forth between the staple marks, refilling the brush as needed. I then switch to lighter vertical strokes from shear to center line to even out the coat, pulling thicker spots to thinner spots. The final step is gentle tipping strokes pulling from dry towards wet to pop bubbles and lift off excess resin. With that section complete, I move on to the next one foot section and repeat the three step process. While it may seem exceedingly dangerous to take a blowtorch to your fresh coat of epoxy, it's actually a great way to eliminate bubbles. The heat of the torch lowers the viscosity of the resin surface briefly and expands any trapped air to the point where the bubbles pop and disappear. The resin just isn't that easy to burn. The cloth is applied and wet out and the fill coat is complete. Now I'll just let it cure overnight. In the next episode, I'll build the combing. Until then, if you have any questions, I'd like to hear them. Please subscribe to my channel to be notified of future episodes and hit like if you are learning from these videos.